chasing the police every single day. If we don't have free speech, then we just don't have a free country. It's as simple as that. If this most fundamental right is allowed to perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple just like dominoes, one by one, they'll go down. That's why today I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left-wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because they've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureaucrats, Silicon Valley tyrants, left-wing activists, and depraved corporate news media have been conspiring to manipulate and silence the American people. They have collaborated to suppress vital information on everything from elections to public health. The censorship cartel must be dismantled and destroyed, and it must happen immediately. And here's my plan. First, within hours of my inauguration, I will sign an executive order banning any federal department or agency from colluding with any organization, business, or person to censor, limit, categorize, or impede the lawful speech of American citizens. I will then ban federal money from being used to label domestic speech as mis- or disinformation. And I will begin the process of identifying and firing every federal bureaucrat who has engaged in domestic censorship, directly or indirectly, whether they are the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health, Human Services, the FBI, the DOJ, no matter who they are. Second, I will order the Department of Justice to investigate all parties involved in the new online censorship regime, which is absolutely destructive and terrible, and to aggressively prosecute any and all crimes identified. These include possible violations of federal civil rights law, campaign finance laws, federal election law, securities law, and antitrust laws, the Hatch Act, and a host of other potential criminal, civil, regulatory, and constitutional offenses. To assist in these efforts, I am urging House Republicans to immediately send preservation letters and we have to do this right now, to the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, and every Silicon Valley tech giant, ordering them not to destroy evidence of censorship. Third, upon my inauguration as president, I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk, revising Section 230, to get big online platforms out of censorship business. From now on, digital platforms should only qualify for immunity protection under Section 230 if they meet high standards of neutrality, transparency, fairness, and non-discrimination. We should require these platforms to increase their efforts to take down unlawful content such as child exploitation and promoting terrorism while dramatically curtailing their power to arbitrarily restrict lawful speech. Fourth, we need to break up the entire toxic censorship industry that has arisen under the false guise of tackling so-called myths and disinformation. The federal government should immediately stop funding all nonprofits and academic programs that support this authoritarian project. If any U.S. university is discovered to have engaged in censorship activities or election interferences in the past, such as flagging social media content for removal of blacklisting, those universities should lose federal research dollars and federal student loan support for a period of five years and maybe more. We should also enact new laws laying out clear criminal penalties for federal bureaucrats who partner with private entities to do an end run around the Constitution and deprive Americans of their first, fourth, and fifth amendment rights. In other words, deprive them of their vote. And once you lose those elections, and once you lose your borders like we have, you no longer have a country. Furthermore, to confront the problems of major platforms being infiltrated by legions of former deep staters and intelligence officials, there should be a seven year calling off period before any employee of the FBI, CIA, NSA, DNI, DHS, or DOD is allowed to take a job at a company possessing vast quantities of U.S. user data. Fifth, the time has finally come for Congress to pass a digital bill of rights. This should include a right to digital due process. In other words, government officials should need a court order to take down online content, not send information requests such as the FBI was sending to Twitter. Furthermore, when users of big online platforms have their content or accounts removed, throttled, shadow banned, or otherwise restricted, no matter what name they use, they should have the right to be informed that it's happening, the right to a specific explanation of the reason why, and the right to a timely appeal. In addition, all users over the age of 18 should have the right to opt out of content moderation and curation entirely, 
and receive an unmanipulated stream of information if they so choose. The fight for free speech is a matter of victory or death for America and for the survival of Western civilization itself. When I am president, this whole rotten system of censorship and information control will be ripped out of the system at large. There won't be anything left. By restoring free speech, we'll begin to reclaim our democracy and save our nation. Thank you, and God bless America. Congressman Mike Walsh, the Republican from Florida, joins me now. Congressman, you know, if this was too much, even for Yoel Roth, who was uh, a severe critic of, of Donald Trump in the 2020 elections, I mean, isn't that a direct violation of the First Amendment where you have the FBI demanding uh, social media to, to print stuff that in many cases was false? Yeah, David, I, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg that we're seeing. And, and thankfully, Elon Musk is shining a spotlight on all of this. But how wide did this go and how deep did this go? You know, what was the involvement also of Facebook, of YouTube, yeah. of other Good social point. media companies? How extensively were they deleting accounts and censoring accounts? And then, you know, how high up? Who is directing all of this? We know that 80 agents were dedicated to it. David, and I think the thing that's so disturbing to me is, of course, we don't want foreign election interference. Uh, and that was the original premise, supposedly, of this task force. But I don't see anything in these exchanges that point to Russian, Iranian, Chinese, North Korean, or other types of malicious interference. Well, on it the contrary, Congressman. Way beyond, way beyond their scope. On and, the contrary, uh, they, they is, were pushing false yeah. information that Russia was involved in, particularly with Hunter right. Biden's uh, uh, laptop. You know, for years, Democrats seem to be concerned about organizations like the FBI or DHS or whomever from, from interfering, getting involved politically in our political process. But they're silent now about that. I mean, their silence is deafening, is it not? Yeah, I mean, well, let's just go back a few years. I mean, the Democrats, you know, from a civil liberty standpoint, really threw their hands up at any type of government surveillance, interference. Uh, you know, look at look at their reaction to Edward Snowden, uh, where they, you know, really praised him as a, as a hero for revealing uh, NSA looking into our lives. But now when it aligns with what they wanted politically, uh, with the defeat and the silencing of Donald Trump and conservatives, then you add that on top of the IRS scandal years ago with Lois Lerner, the right. raid of Mar-a-Lago just two days before the, the political freeze out. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the, the 50 intelligence officials that used the weight and gravity of their office to convince us that it was Russian information on Hunter Biden and the erosion of our national security, the trust in our national security apparatus is is truly truly frightening yeah. and that's what we ultimately have to restore restore and transparency is the only way to do that very quickly congressman uh your colleague mike gallagher is calling on all americans to delete TikTok off their phones watch this TikTok is owned by ByteDance, and ByteDance is effectively controlled by the chinese communist party the editor-in-chief of ByteDance, for example, is a CCP secretary. Since a large percentage of young Americans use TikTok to get their news, whether we want them to have the ability to selectively edit that news. It's as if in 1958, given that TikTok is um, on the cusp of becoming the most powerful media company in America, we would have allowed the KGB and Pravda to buy the New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Washington Post. Congressman, quick reaction to that. Do you agree that it's that severe? It is that severe. I 100% agree. I have a rule to add a minimum pending uh, that members of the House can't use uh, TikTok, but uh, mm. we need to ban it as a country. India has done that. We can't have a situation where hundreds of millions of Americans can be influenced by our greatest adversary. Mm. Imagine a situation in a global crisis where they could tell 18-year-old men not to join uh, the military, right. not to be recruited, or they could geolocate pilots or railroad engineers or key members of uh, a, you know, a nuclear reactor, so to, so to speak, if critical infrastructure. We All can't right. have it. Congressman, I'm sorry it. to cut you off. That's the end of this segment. We appreciate you being here. Mike Walsh, good to see you. Thank you very much. The opening bell is next. Happy holidays. This is a Fox News alert, and we're not overselling that. This actually is a blockbuster story. So the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, just went on the Joe Rogan podcast. And while speaking to Rogan, he admitted that Facebook censored the New York Post's accurate reporting on Hunter Biden's laptop, which, of course, we all knew. But that Facebook did that because the FBI intervened and told Facebook that that laptop was Russian disinformation. And, of course, how would Zuckerberg know? They believe the FBI. Now, keep in mind, the FBI had Hunter Biden's laptop when they said that. They've had it since 2019. So when the FBI told Facebook that on the eve of a presidential election, they knew it was a lie. They interfered in the last presidential election. If ever there was an attack on democracy, it's the country's largest law enforcement agency weighing in in a dishonest way three weeks before the voting begins. Here's a clip.
there was a lot of attention on Twitter during the election because of the Hunter Biden laptop story. The New yeah, York we Post. Had that too. Yeah, so you guys censored that as well? So we took a different path than Twitter. Um, I mean, basically, the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us, uh, some, some folks on our team, and was like, hey, um, just so you know, like, you should be on high alert. There was, the, we, we thought there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of, um, uh, of, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. So the FBI censored the story. Just to recap, in case you didn't live in this country prior to two years ago, that's not allowed. You're not allowed to do that. That is election interference. That is an attack on democracy by our most powerful domestic government agency. It's unbelievable. It defies belief. We actually put in a request to Facebook to see the communications from the FBI to Facebook. We have a right to see it. We hope that they'll send them to us. Keep in mind that in October of 2020, a Facebook executive and Democratic Party operative called Andy Stone claimed that Facebook was blocking the story, quote, as part of our standard process to reduce the spread of misinformation. So they didn't tell us that the FBI had told them it was Russian disinformation. Again, when the FBI knew perfectly well that it wasn't. Harmeet Dillon has watched all of this from the very beginning. She's the country's premier civil rights lawyer, founder of the Center for American Liberty, joining us tonight. Harmeet, thanks for coming on. This seems like a blockbuster and a shocking story to me. It is shocking, Tucker, but it confirms information that we already had. So, for example, I already sued Twitter uh, after the election for taking people's speakers down, including my client, Rogan O'Hanley. And it turned out that he was taken down at the request of the California Secretary of State, who was auditioning to become a United States senator in the, uh, in the Biden administration. And so we filed a lawsuit, went to court, showed the, showed the judge all the evidence of, uh, of, of how the government was involved in the censorship, and the judge didn't buy it. This case is now pending before the Ninth Circuit, and there have been other instances like this. But hearing it from Mark Zuckerberg's mouth is, is truly stunning, and I don't know how the government can deny this. So to be clear, the timeline is that just three weeks before the 2020 election is when the FBI reached out to Twitter, uh, Facebook, as well as maybe other companies, and said, hey, you know, we heard about this Russian disinformation. You might want to suppress this information on your website. And by the way, when the FBI reaches out to you, taps you on the shoulder, and asks you to do something, that isn't a suggestion. They have subpoenas, they have guns, and they also are from a government that regulates you. And so this is shocking, and it, it demands an investigation. Uh, but it just adds up to the pile of evidence that I've been saying points to a major reorganization or disbanding of the FBI is needed at this point. I don't trust anything that they say. So just to be totally clear, from a legal perspective, the U.S. government is not allowed to use, itself use disinformation to encourage censorship for partisan ends. That's not allowed under the That's Constitution, right. correct? T okay. Tucker, it's a violation of the First Amendment for the government to engage in censorship, quite clearly. Yeah. And by the way, who needs Russian disinformation when we have our own? We have our own disinformation That's coming right. from the FBI and our own government. And, and this is not trivial just because it's being done to the other side. Anybody could control the FBI or some, some forces can get in there and decide they don't like Joe Biden. Are they going to go out there and start uh, spreading misinformation or, or suppressing information that's truthful uh, about the Biden administration. I don't like that either. This cannot be allowed. We cannot let our law enforcement do this. And we've seen it before. So this is not the country that we want to be living in, Tucker. No, it's not. Armitone, thank you so much. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.